In the previous video, we learned what is recursion and why we might want to use it in problem solving. In this video, let's look at it in action with code. For our example, let's learn how to find the nth Fibonacci number. Here is the problem statement. Given a number n, find the nth element of the Fibonacci sequence. In mathematics, the Fibonacci sequence is a sequence in which each number is a sum of the two preceding ones. The first two numbers in the sequence are 0 and 1. For example, recursive Fibonacci of 0 is equal to 0, recursive Fibonacci of 1 is equal to 1, and recursive Fibonacci of 6 is equal to 8. So 0th element, 1st element, and 6th element since we start with 0 index. Rather than the entire sequence, we are now interested only in the number present at a certain position in the sequence. If you have understood the problem statement, let me give you some general problem solving advice when it comes to recursion. First, you need to figure out how to break down the problem into smaller versions of the same problem. Second, you need to identify the base case for recursion. Well then, go ahead, pause the video and try solve the problem. Alright, let's now solve the problem together. We know that the Fibonacci sequence is a sequence in which each number is the sum of the two preceding ones. So if f represents a function to calculate the Fibonacci number, then f of n will be equal to f of n minus 1 plus f of n minus 2. Each number is the sum of the previous two numbers. Well, how do you calculate the previous two numbers? Well, they are once again the sum of their own previous two numbers. We have expressed our problem as a smaller version of the same problem. We still have to calculate the Fibonacci number, but this time of smaller numbers. This is great, but the loop won't stop without a base case. Well, what is our base case? Well, f of 0 is equal to 0 and f of 1 is equal to 1. This is given in our problem statement. Let's understand this approach with a simple example. Now what is f of 2? Substitute n with 2 and you get f of 2 is equal to f of 1 plus f of 0. What is f of 1? It is 1. What is f of 0? It is 0. So f of 2 is equal to 1 plus 0 which is 1. Hopefully you have understood our approach to solving the problem with recursion. Let's go back to Replit and implement it. So back here in Replit, I have an empty index.js file. Let's begin by defining the function signature. Function recursive Fibonacci, parentheses and curly braces. The function will have one parameter n which denotes the element position in the Fibonacci sequence. For example, calling the function with n equal to 0, 1 and 6 should return 0, 1 and 8. Make sure you note that n starts at 0 and not 1. Now what do we know about our recursive solution? We know that f of n is equal to f of n minus 1 plus f of n minus 2. So within the function body, return recursive Fibonacci of n minus 1 plus recursive Fibonacci of n minus 2. But this, as you can see, is never ending. We need to add a base case to stop the infinite execution. And what is our base case? Well, f of 0 is equal to 0 and f of 1 is equal to 1. 
we can start the function with that base case. If n is less than 2, return n. This will return 0 if n is equal to 0 and will return 1 if n is equal to 1. That completes our recursive Fibonacci solution. Let's verify by running the code. We see the three values corresponding to each function call. Our code works as expected. What I would like you to do is take a pen and a paper and trace the function execution for n is equal to 7. That will give you a more clear understanding of the code we have written. When it comes to the Fibonacci sequence, there isn't much that we can simplify. The iterative solution is pretty straightforward as well. But the idea here is to understand the recursive solution and use the technique later in the course. And let me tell you, for finding the nth Fibonacci number, the iterative solution is far more optimal than the recursive solution. Let's make sure we understand that by judging the time complexity. We know that the iterative solution was big O of n. Now, what do you think is the big O of the recursive solution? I'll give you a hint. It is something we haven't seen in the previous iterative approaches. Pause and give it a try. All right, let's now solve together. Let's take n is equal to 7 and understand the number of times the function is called. First, we have f of 7. This is equal to f of 6 plus f of 5. So two calls for one. Similarly, for f of 6, we have f of 5 and f of 4. For f of 5, we have f of 4 and f of 3. So four calls at this level. In the next level, this becomes eight calls. I'm running out of space, but this continues to 16, 32, 64, and so on as the value of n grows. If we identify a pattern, it is 2 power 1, 2 power 2, 2 power 3, and so on till 2 power n. So the time complexity for recursive Fibonacci is 2 power n. If we take a look at our big O cheat sheet, you can see the performance is pretty terrible compared to big O of n. So recursion is not a good solution to the Fibonacci sequence problem. All right, I hope you're starting to understand a little more about the recursion technique in problem solving. In the next video, let's solve the factorial problem with recursion. Thank you for watching. Make sure to subscribe to the channel and I'll see you in the next video.